Okay, hi guys. So in this lecture, we'll be starting off with IOD metric and IOD metric titration. So let's get started with first IOD metric titration. Okay. So this can also be known as called as direct titration. Okay. Okay, so this is used to find the strength of reducing agent. Used to find strength of reducing agent. Okay, so for some facts, the standard solution of iodine is filled in the burette which is a purple colored solution standard solution of iodine which is purple colored is filled in a burette okay and second that the direct titration of I2 with the reducing agent take place. Direct titration of I2 with the reducing agent take place. In which we see the reaction as follows. So this is not an example, rather this is the direct reaction. So we have I2 plus let's suppose Na2S2O3 is the aqueous solution or the reducing agent present and the reaction goes forward as we get 2 moles of NaI by the way we use 2 moles of Na2S2O3 as well in aqueous phase and then we get Na2S4O6 again aqueous okay or in ionic terms we can write it that I2 plus 2S2 O3 2 minus gets reduced to 2I minus plus S4 O6 mi 2 minus in which sulfur is oxidized. Okay. So at equivalent point, what we can write? So why is the sulfur oxidized or? Is it oxidized uh, if at all so we just need to know that so let's calculate the oxidation state of sulfur here so let's say the oxidation state for sulfur in this compound was x then we have 3 into minus 2 obviously minus 2 is the oxidation state of oxygen and total overall charge on the compound is minus 2 so 2x would be equal to minus 2 plus 6 so x would come out to be plus 2 okay and in this case what would be the oxidation state for sulfur here let's say it was x plus 6 times minus 2 should be equal to minus 2 4x equals to 10 x equals to 2.5 okay so hence we can say that sulfur was indeed oxidized okay so at equivalent point let's continue what will happen here is at equivalent point we will see that uh, N1V1 again would be equal to N2V2 okay so this reaction takes place in acidic or neutral medium because in basic medium disproportionation of halogen takes place okay so here we can find the concentration of reducing agent with this formula as we are using the burette to fill in the iodine and we are dropping the iodine drop uh, dropping the iodine in the beaker containing the reducing agent hence note the concentration and volume which we are dropping from the burette and we know the volume of reducing agent in the beaker hence we can find the normality of Na2S2O3 or any reducing agent for that matter so some notes here that this reaction takes place in acidic medium or neutral medium
because in basic medium disproportionation of halogen halogen will take place takes place okay next let us see iodometric titration so this was iodometric titration which we just saw next let us see iodometric titration okay so this is a two step process okay so it is used to find the strength of oxidizing agent oxidizing agent example can be CuSO4 or KiO3 okay so in this case oxidizing agent reacted with excess Ki aqueous solution and iodine is evolved so oxidizing agent reacted with Excess Ki aqueous solution and iodine is evolved. Okay, so formed or evolved iodine now reacts with the standard solution of sodium thiosulfate. So we are reacting the formed or evolved iodine with reacted with rather is now made to react with standard solution of sodium thiosulfate which is nothing but Na2 S2O3 okay so let's see this it with step by step process so in step 1 we have CuSO4 which is getting reacted with Ki and forming Cu2 I2 plus I2 plus K2SO4 okay so here we can say that the n factor of here this would be it is going from plus 2 to plus 1 so n factor would be here 1 okay and as the stoichiometric coefficient is 2 hence the number of electrons evo involved in the reaction would be 2 so n factor of this would be 0.5 n factor of this would be 2 n factor here would be again 2 ok so as only oxidation number of 2 moles of rather uh, oxidation of iodine takes place here so only one one of the electrons so not just here 2 moles were involved in minus going from minus 1 to 0 and 2 moles were involved in going from minus 1 to so they these are basically unchanged so only two moles of electrons were involved so by that also n factor would be 2 by 4 again 0.5 okay so this was the step 1 and step 2 would be this iodine is made to react with Na2S2O3 and this forms this is a reducing agent Na2S2O3 or sodium thiosulfate two moles are required here and it will form Na2S4O6 okay so it is going from 2 oxidation state to 2.5 we have already discussed it in the previous lecture 2 to 2.5 okay so number of electrons would be involved would be 2 into 2 and n uh, stoichiometric coefficient is 
0.2 into 0.5 change is only 0.5 and stoichiometric coefficient is again 2 so what would be the n factor so let us let's us, let's us take it uh, one more time so here total amount of electrons involved will be not 2 into 0.5 rather 4 into 0.5 why because here you can say see that this is in plus 2 state so there are 4 moles of sulfur in 2 moles of and it was 2 or 3 so total um, 4 moles of sulfur are going from plus 8 to 4 moles are here going to plus 10 I am taking the combined number of electrons here combined oxidation state here so this requires two electrons to be l l loosed by this reducing agent okay so total moles of in the uh, total moles of electrons involved is two and divided by stoichiometric coefficient of this compound which is which is again two so n factor would be one okay so this is just one of the ways of calculating the n factor and another way could be as you can see that iodine is going from zero to minus one so number of electrons involved is again 1 into number of iodine atoms which is 2 divided by stoichiometric coefficient of iodine which is 1 so n factor is 2 here and n factor is 1 here okay so what we can see what we can conclude from the both the steps that from step 2 we can write that milli equivalence equivalents of of I2 would be equals to milli equivalence of Na2S2 O3 reacted. Okay, and from first step we can write again that milli equivalence of I2 produced would be equal to milli equivalence of C8 Cu as a four consumed or at equilibrium we can say the milli equivalence of both the i2 and cu2 cu so4 would be same so milli equivalent of cu so4 would be equal to milli equivalent of of i2 so from 1 and 2 we can write that milli equivalence of cu so4 would be equal to milli equivalent of Na2 as 2O3 and we know that milli equivalent is nothing but number of moles into n factor or we can write that milli moles of CuSO4 multiplied with n factor of CuSO4 n factor of CuSO4 is 1 into n factor of CuSO4 should be equal to milli moles of Na2S2O3 Na2S2O3 multiplied with again n factor of Na2S2O3 and, uh, and n factor of Na2S2O3 is again 1 ok so we can write that simply millimoles of CuSO4 would be equals to millimoles of Na2S2 O3. Okay, so with this we come to the end of this lecture. In the next lecture, we will be seeing the law of equivalence. Okay, so till then good luck and good bye.